Hello everybody and welcome back to Great Woman History. Today I'll be discussing Boudicca. First, however, let's start with some background. I know the background doesn't always seem relevant, but seeing as how this was 2,000 years ago, background is necessary. Boudicca was a leader of the Iceni tribe. The Iceni tribe was right here, around modern-day Norfolk. She fought against the Roman Empire, which at its height controlled all of these territories. If you're noticing an overlap, well, so did they, but that's kind of the whole problem. So it's time for an extremely brief, and I do mean brief, background on the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire started as a kingdom on the Italian peninsula. The Roman people then overthrew the king and became the Roman Republic. They conquered the rest of the Italian peninsula and then conquered Greece. They moved on to Spain and North Africa, which caused them to go to war against Carthage. Elephants crossed the Alps, which is pretty cool, but the Romans killed the ones that didn't die on the journey. So Rome beat Carthage and started moving up into Gaul, now France. Now is the part where this is relevant to our story. Julius Caesar was trying to conquer the Gauls and decided to sail to Britain because he thought the tribes in Britain were helping the tribes in Gaul. He led two short expeditions and those expeditions did not do a whole lot, but they did make Caesar super popular. So a little while later, Caesar was a little less popular and crossed the Rubicon with his army and became dictator, which did not have the same connotations back then that it does now. He was later assassinated, which is probably what he is most famous for. <laughs> then his grandnephew Octavian changed his name to Augustus and declared himself first citizen, and the already very empire-looking republic officially became an empire. So now the Roman conquest of Britain. Well, as previously stated, Julius Caesar led two expeditions into Britain, one in 55 BCE and one in 54 BCE. As I said before, these expeditions did not do a whole lot with regards to conquest, but they did open up a trading relationship. In 43 CE, Emperor Claudius ordered an invasion of Britain, and the Roman conquest of Britain finally began. The Iceni tribe initially allied with the Romans, however they rebelled in 47 CE when they were threatened with disarmament. That rebellion was put down, but the Iceni retained their independence for the time being. And now I am finally going to start talking about Boudicca. Boudicca can be spelled multiple ways, however it is most commonly spelled B-O-U-D-I-C-A or B-O-U-D-I-C-C-A. I know that doesn't sound like I narrowed it down at all, but in the late Tudor era when people were first learning about her, they were putting in V's and E's everywhere, so this is an improvement. So Boudicca was married to Prosutagus, the king of the Iceni tribe. They had two daughters together. The Iceni during Prosutagus' reign had a good relationship with the Romans. However, Prosutagus worried that the Romans would attack after his death. For that reason, in his will, he left half of his territory to the Roman Emperor Nero and the other half to his two daughters. Prasitagus' attempt to protect his family and people proved futile. Upon his death, Rome invaded all of the Iceni territory. When Boudicca protested, she was beaten and her daughters were raped. Boudicca wanted justice and she would fight for it. Boudicca rallied the Iceni and the neighboring Trinovantes. Her forces destroyed Camelodunum, modern-day Colchester, and then sacked Londinium, modern-day London. Boudicca's army continued and destroyed Verulamium, modern-day St. Albans. Tacitus wrote that around 70,000 were killed by the rebels. But the Roman forces regrouped for a final battle, the Battle of Watling Street. Despite the name, historians don't actually know where the battle took place. Obviously, it was on or around Watling Street. But as you can see, Watling Street is very long. It's like saying there was a battle in America on 995, with no other context. Just, we have no idea where it was. Anyway, the Romans were outnumbered, but they had better equipment and were better disciplined. The Romans slaughtered the rebels in a decisive victory. Boudicca either committed suicide or fell fatally ill shortly after the battle. It is unknown what happened to her daughters. For over a thousand years, Boudicca was forgotten, but then the works of Tacitus were rediscovered and introduced to the English in the 16th century. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, there were plays and poems written about Boudicca but that is nothing compared to her popularity 300 years later. Boudicca means victory, so when Victoria became Queen of England, many saw the historical warrior queen and the Queen of England as connected. Once again, there were poems about Boudicca, but there were also many ships named for her, and a statue erected in honor of the warrior queen. And that concludes the fourth episode of Great Woman History. I know this episode covered a lot of background, but the truth is our world is very different now than it was 2,000 years ago. And without background, things would get confusing. Also, women in ancient times weren't written about as much as they were even a thousand years ago, so it is a challenge to put together their lives. 
The next video will take place in the 16th century, so the background to biography ratio will be a lot better. So come back next time to learn about Catherine de Medici. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. If there is any particular woman that you would like for me to do an episode on, then please mention her in the comments below. Thank you.